Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of your hearts, of our hearts, by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen.
Time is surely coming, says the Lord God, when I will send a famine on the land. Not a famine of bread or a thirst for water, but a hearing the words of the Lord. They shall wander from sea to sea and from north to east. They shall run to and fro, seeking the word of the Lord, but they shall not find it. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Let us read, read Psalm 52 responsibly for my half verse. You tyrant, why do you boast of wickedness? Against the God of the all day long. You plot ruin, your tongue is like a sharpened razor. A worker of deception. You love evil more than good. And lying more than speaking the truth. You love all words that hurt. Oh, you deceitful tongue. Oh, that God would demolish you utterly. Topple you and snatch you from your dwelling and root you out of the land of the living. The righteous shall see and tremble. And they shall laugh at him and say, This is the one who did not take God for a refuge. But trusted in great wealth and relied on great riches. But I am like a green olive tree in the house of God. I trust in the mercy of God forever and ever. I will give you thanks for what you have done. And declare the goodness of your name in the presence of the God. A reading from Colossians. Christ Jesus is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. For in him all things in heaven and on earth were created, things visible and invisible. Whether thrones or dominions or rulers or powers, all things have been created through him and for him. He himself is before all things, and in him all things hold together. He is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, so that he might come to have first place in everything. For in him all the fullness of God was pleased to dwell. And through him God was pleased to reconcile to himself all things, whether on earth or in heaven, by making peace through the blood of his cross. And you who were once estranged and hostile in mind, doing evil deeds, he has now reconciled in his fleshly body through death, so as to present you holy and blameless and irreproachable before him. Provided that you continue securely established and steadfast in the faith, without shifting from the hope promised by the gospel that you heard, which has been proclaimed to every creature under heaven, I, Paul, became a servant of this gospel. I am now rejoicing in my sufferings for your sake, and in my flesh I am completing what is lacking in Christ's afflictions for the sake of his body, that is, the church. I became a servant according to God's commission that was given to me for you, to make the word of God fully known, the mystery that has been hidden throughout the ages and generations, but has now been revealed to the saints. To them God chose to make known how great among the Gentiles are the riches of the glory of this mystery, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. It is he whom we proclaim, warning everyone and teaching everyone in all wisdom, so that we may present everyone mature in Christ. <clears throat> the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. The gospel hymn can be found on page 711. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. <laughs>
to you, Lord Christ. As Jesus and his disciples went on their way, Jesus entered a village where a woman named Martha welcomed him into her home. She had a, had a sister named Mary who sat at the Lord's feet and listened to him, to what he was saying. But Martha was distracted by her many tasks. So she came to him and said, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to do all the work by myself? Tell her then to help me. But the Lord answered her, Martha, Martha, you are worried and distracted by many things. There is need of only one thing. Mary has chosen the better part, which will not be taken away from her. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. Christ. Inadequate. 
But in my shame, I went back over my work. I knew I had done the part right. I had said the words clearly and distinctly. I got the accent right, put the emotions right, made the right moves on the stage, but I missed the point. I was so busy trying to prove my competence that I didn't enter into the fullness of the play. All my hard and good work was all about me. I was filling myself up rather than emptying myself out. I was, as the editor of Luke writes, distracted. See, only when an actor empties him or herself out, dies to one's ego, entering fully into the new community, can the character he or she plays come to life. Plays are not about talented single actors getting on the stage with other talented single actors, saying written lines and not bumping into the surface of the scenery. A play is about people joyfully coming to share their particular talents, to work together to create a new reality. The play is not about the lines or action, but about the creating of a space, a new space, between the people and the cast, and then sharing that space with an audience. At its best, it is the creation of a community which comes together to invite people to join them. Jesus tells Martha and Mary that tells Martha that Mary had chosen the better part. And the part is not the part we play to play, which has Mary as a student and Martha as a hostess, but about the joy from being inside a community instead of being distracted in the inside of your own ego. Jesus was in the process of creating a community of a new reality for the world and inviting people to join them in living a different kind of life. A different kind of life where one dies to one's own ego in order to create a new community. Martha gets busy, which is not a bad thing to do. Work is not a bad thing. The problem is, is when work is an excuse to build up one's own ego in order to earn praise or a sense of worth. That it's not a relationship, but only a commercial exchange from which we never seem to break even. That is what Martha's complaining about when she accuses Jesus of not caring enough, paying her enough attention, giving Mary more. In the Bible, we have a theme that keeps coming back over and over again. In the beginning, there's Genesis with God. The community within God's very self makes a decision to enlarge the infinite love. The divine community creates and molds forth a human from the humus. God then says, it's not good for a human to live without a community. So a maid is created by loving, by losing a part of the human self in order to be made into a community, a community united and living into the sacred space between them. So what do these two humans do? <clears throat> to live in a community with God? They become distracted and find a way to distance themselves from God by not telling the whole truth, by blaming others, and by hiding. The story goes on as the couple tries to continue community by having two children, Cain and Abel, except Cain gets distracted, kills Abel, and then says, am I my brother's keeper? The answer is, of course, yes, in God's community, care, you care for one another. But the sacred space between, between us is what community is all about. That's what Amos, thousands of years later, is thundering about. The people have gotten so distracted that the fruit they have is the end of summer fruit. It's rotting away. They have forgotten that the care for one another is the hallmark of community. The psalmist for today decries our living, our loving words that our loving words that hurt which undermine community. 
The writer of the letter to Colossians urges the people to remember that they're being brought together by a power greater than themselves into a community and not to be distracted from the love that binds them. And when you were once a strange and hostile mind doing evil deeds, he has now reconciled in his bed fleshly body through death so as to be present as to present you holy and blameless and real irreproachable before him, provided that you continue securely established and steadfast in faith, without shifting from the hope promised by the gospel. The theme of scripture from beginning to end is that we are meant to live in community where we take care of God's garden, God's children together. We are cast in God's play to care for each other and our neighbors. But somehow, in our moments of destruction, we create and take parts in other improvisations of comedies and tragedies to find so many ways to get distracted and to pick arguments with each other and our neighbors. Imagine what life would look like if we begin each day not with the rehearsal of the disappointments of the past or the previous day, but with a thanksgiving for the day to come, <clears throat> such as with the last <coughs> verse of the psalm for the day. I will give you thanks for what you have done and declare the goodness of your name in the presence of the godly. Over the thought expressed by a Buddhist monk, Trick Dakam, when he writes, waking up this morning, I smile. 24 uh, brand new hours are before me. I vow to live fully in each moment and to look at all things with eyes of compassion. You are members of St. Thomas Church. You live in a hospital and you're looking for a new rector. One of the questions you will need to ask yourself is, what is the community in which you are called to tend the garden of souls with and for each other together through the eyes of compassion? My hope is that whenever you find yourself having cast yourself in one of these improvisations, singing in the kitchen with Martha, which in my experience, seemingly only happens on days ending in the letter Y, <laughs> which means every day. I pray you stop and listen to Jesus, who's inviting each of us with a smile on his voice as he says to you your person, your personal and corporate name. Oh, we were so worried and distracted by many things. There's need of only one thing. There's a better part which need not be taken away from you. And she agreed. <laughs> I, as I start to write, I, I start a poem, usually trying to figure out what I'm going to say. So this is uh, the poem that I wrote called Singing in the Kitchen with Paul Martha. Over the stew, Martha's continued stewing. Each paddle stroke thudded on the pot's edge, spilling, spilling on the fire, sizzling. She made her pledge she'd be shamed, Mary be shamed at the dining dinner, having her ruin how she neglected to help out her good sister, who was so faithful. <laughs> she opted to stay in the kitchen, muttering away quietly, so that they not your bitching. Then play a foot upon martyr, showing a big blister. Martha longed to have Mary hear Jesus scold Mary for her selfish pursuit of a soft life, lounging with lazy disciples, while in the hot kitchen, scrounging Martha's earning her right to be in Jesus' fold. How distracting it is to look down on others, almost forgetting that we're sisters and brothers. Amen.
one God, the Father of the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things are made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Prayers of the People, Forum 3. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church. That we all may be one. Grant that every member of the Church may truly and humbly serve you. That, that your name may be glorified by all people. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons. That they may be faithful ministers of your word and sacraments. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world. That there may be justice and peace on the earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. That our works may find favor in your sight. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble. That, that they may be delivered from their distress. Give to the departed eternal rest. That, that light perpetual shine upon them. Especially let us remember Klaus and Jernigan, whom the altar flowers are a memory of, and given by Becky and Vicki Tiger. And also those listed on our prayer list this week. To St. John's Wilmington, the Reverend Eric Wolfen, Rector, for those with birthdays, Fred Liverman, Mike Stazak, Aiden Rayman, Edward Blanchard. And also those with anniversaries this week. Colin and Patsy Jones, Lee and John Fitzwater, and Bubba and, Bubba and Carol and Peel. And we give thanks today to Claire Presley for her beautiful music. And Dr. Sawyer asked me to remind you all to pray for uh, B. Vaughn, who is at Three Rivers in Windsor. And also pray for Nancy Griffin Warren. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. We confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. 
by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. As far as the east is from the west, so have your sins departed from you. May you day, may you begin the new day, set free, so that you may walk in joy and live in peace with God and all of God's people. This we in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. And then in two weeks, we will have Eucharist with baptism for uh, Alice Harrell, and the covered dish will follow the service. I tried to talk me to put it off until I came back. <laughs> <laughs> we'll find you someone to baptize next time. Do it. <laughs> I can Walk in love as Christ loves you, and bring yourselves as offerings and sacrifices to God. That is your spiritual worship. <laughs>
who seem to be in, in the Episcopal Church have been in flux. Uh, at this church, they decided that uh, it is considered appropriate to uh, drink from the chalice. If you feel uncomfortable with that, that's all right. Uh, you can continue, or you may have a blessing to give it to you. All may, some should, none must. The Lord be with you. And God also with you. you. Lift up your hearts. We, we lift them to the Lord. Lord. Let's give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, is right, right giving thanks and praise. praise. It is right and good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who on the first day of the week overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection over dogs the way of everlasting life. Therefore we praise you. Joining, with our, joining our voices with angels and archangels, with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Therefore, let us 
eat the feast. Hallelujah. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance of Christ by you. And feel it in your hearts by faith.
tell us we have to make God's love continue to blossom and grow forth and grow. In thanksgiving, let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of the God of our Savior Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food and the sacrament of the body and blood. Send us now into the world and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with your blessings and sinfulness of heart.